Hello, Blue Demons. Welcome to our Friday afternoon session of Get to Know DePaul. Today, we will be joined by Celia from the Liberal Studies Program. Uh, as we get started, as we do for every stream, just a friendly reminder that you have the opportunity to check into today's stream by scanning the QR code pictured here or by clicking the link in the comments box uh, to check in for your opportunity to win one of our stainless steel map water bottles. So uh, you can check in anytime between now and Friday, September 11th, whether you're watching the stream live or in the recorded session as well for that opportunity uh, to, to get one of those bottles. So uh, we will go ahead and get started. But Celia, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks, Courtney. Yeah, so to get started, how about uh, we start with introductions. So just tell us a little bit about who you are, how long you've worked at DePaul, um, and perhaps the reason you decided to come to DePaul in the first place. All right. Um, well, my name is Celia DeBoer. As Courtney said, I'm the Liberal Studies Program Coordinator. I've actually been at DePaul since 2008 when I came as a freshman. And what appealed to me is because I'm from a rural hometown, uh, rural area in Michigan, and the city is something that always fascinated me and the um, issues the political issues that DePaul um, is centered in, in terms of the city, really drew me to Chicago. Um, and that was the same year Obama was running for president for the first time. So that definitely drew me to Chicago and DePaul. And DePaul had really good um, marketing to where I live. So that really helped too. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Great. That would be a, a an amazing time to be in the city of Chicago, especially in 20 or 2008. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Canvas did all the stuff I was excited to do as an 18 year old. And oh, yeah. I, um, so I did undergrad and I majored in political science. Surprise, surprise, based on what I just said, what drew me here. Uh, and I took on a lot of opportunities in undergrad and I learned too late that there was a, a WGS um, five-year master's um, combined with a BA. So I ended up doing the two-year master's program in women's and gender studies. Mm -hmm. And during that, I um, worked as the administrative assistant for DePaul's library. So I got a lot of library knowledge too. Yeah. And then from there, I transitioned and got a new job, the new position that I'm in now, um, liberal studies program coordinator, which I've been in for three years now. And um, that inspired me to uh, get a degree in curriculum design from the College of Ed at DePaul, which I actually finished winter quarter this year. So. Oh, congrats. So are you, it sounds, you're a triple demon then? I'm a triple thing? demon. Yeah, I haven't even had any of those. Demon, like, yeah. <laughs> like double demon. Yeah. yeah. Well, great. Well, congratulations on your recent graduation. Thanks. Yeah, so how about you tell us a little bit about what the liberal studies program does? So the liberal studies program, as an undergrad, all students take liberal studies requirement. It's the general ed education program at DePaul. So whatever university you would go to, you would encounter these classes. And we have, um, thanks Courtney for pulling that up. There's just a visual. So we have the common core, which um, over the years with liberal studies, we used to have these classes tied to specific years to take these classes. And a lot of you are, signed up for the Chicago quarter class. So that's usually taking your freshman year. And then you also take the focal point seminar in your freshman year along with first year writing. After that, it's more flexible of when you take the other classes in the core. Typically your senior capstone, you take your senior year. Experiential learning, um, again, that's more like internships, community-based service learning, many opportunities for that to take um, throughout your four years at DePaul. Uh, and then the quantitative reasoning and technological literacy covers um, the math kind of requirement at DePaul. And then the multiculturalism seminar in the US, most uh, all students are required to take this. It is a opportunity to sit down and talk about uh, different identities intersecting within the US. U.S. and having more of a discussion-based class rather than lecture class. And then outside of the Common Core, each major has different requirements for fulfilling the learning domains. So you would have to go check your DPR or go to the catalog and look at your major to see what your liberal studies 
requirements are in terms of learning domains. So for example, you could have um, be an art major, so you might not have arts and literature requirements, but you'll have more SCBI, religious dimensions, scientific inquiry requirements. So uh, I highly recommend you meet with your advisor if you have any direct questions about what requirements you have for your major. And, and of course, you could always reach out to our office as well. That's great. Yeah, I think liberal studies as a as a base for curriculum is really important because it gives students the opportunities to get a very well-rounded education. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And it gives you a chance to explore um, stuff you're curious about outside of your major. So I highly recommend if you're curious about science, but you're a philosoph philosophy major, take a few science classes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it exposes you to lots of different types of learning too, which I think is one of the great the great components of a of a liberal studies studies curriculum because you do have all of these different parts. It's not just you're not going to learn in the same way every single time. So when when people talk about going to college and really giving that chance to ex expand your mind and expand your thinking, liberal studies curriculums is a is a great way for that to to really happen. Exactly. And it's a great opportunity to meet students in other colleges and take classes in other colleges outside of your major. Um, so it's another way. Um, yeah, for some majors, your classes might all be in Lincoln Park. So it might be fun to like take a class in the loop when we are able to be more face to face again, that is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great. So um, Celia, before we begin, you and I were talking a little bit about um, the, some of the unique and different ways that students can re obtain their liberal studies credits um, that that are a little bit different than just a, a traditional classroom setting. I'm curious if you can tell our viewers a little bit about more about those as well. So, um, for example, uh, a lot of you are taking Chicago Quarter right now, and you'll learn that the next step is to take your focal point seminar. Now, that is more of a seminar base where you learn how to have group discussions, but there's in the spring and winter, there's a few sections called first year abroad. So you would meet for the 10 weeks as a regular class, but focused on a specific um, location and uh, content. And I was actually a staff pro for one of these uh, study abroad opportunities, where at the end of the trip for 10 days, we go to the location and immerse ourselves with what we learned. So for the focal, the first year abroad I did last year was to Beijing, China, where we discussed and looked at climate change policies and how they're engaging with the future, which is ironic because that was March last year. Yeah. <laughs> and other ways, so that's a way to like fulfill your focal point seminar requirement. And we're developing new opportunities with the multiculturalism seminar requirement, also known as LSP 200 called Identities Abroad. So um, after freshman year, you might look at those opportunities, a few more bubbling up there. We had a tentative one this past year planned to South Africa, for example. So, you know, just look at the Study Abroad website and then the first year program website, which is within the liberal studies website that's at the bottom. And when you look at, consider your experiential learning down the road in your DePaul career, there are various ways you should meet with your advisor first because some majors have specific requirements to fulfill the experiential learning credit. But within that, it's typically either an internship, community-based service learning, uh, specific projects related to getting field experience. So, yeah. Yeah, that's great. And for those of you that might be curious about learning more about study abroad in particular, we also did a Get to Know DePaul interview with Marty, who's the, the director of study abroad. And you can hear more about those opportunities and experiences uh, through our recorded video, which is available in the streaming, se the streaming series tab of the DEN, which is the Digital Engagement Network. So just visit go.depaul.edu slash DEN uh, and click there and you can, can hear more, uh, more in depth overview of study abroad from Marty as well. So, so yeah, as we head into this um, fall quarter, uh, and really a, a new school year, why is it that students should connect with the liberal studies program? Why do they connect with them? When should they connect with them? Is there a logical pro progression of who perhaps they should connect to first as well? If, 
think I've said a few times, um, but it's very important to meet with your advisor. But first, I think it's helpful to look at your DPR or the catalog page of your major and look at the liberal studies requirements. And then from there, there's also within the catalog, you can look up which classes meet the little liberal studies requirements that can help you plan. So the next step after you kind of do your self work is to meet with your advisor and kind of look at what classes you plan on taking and whether you're considering a double major or how can you use your liberal studies program requirements to fulfill a minor. There's many options, um, but you're all always welcome to reach out to our office, uh, liberal studies at DePaul.edu, and we can answer any questions. But um, sometimes we, and if you don't know your advisor, I can help figure it out and then copy the advisor in so we can help solve everything. But your advisor has the best knowledge of how to um, fulfill your liberal studies requirements or whether um, there's an elective you didn't know was a liberal studies requirement. I mean, that the DPR should populate it, but sometimes, you know, technology. Yeah. And can you tell us a little bit about what DPR is? That's the degree progress report. Um, there's been many emails I've seen. So I'm sure within some of them, it, uh, or at Premier, you should have learned how to go through Campus Connect to uh, bring up your degree progress report. So from there, it lists which major requirements you you have. So sometimes it had lists specific classes and says whether you're achieving it. And then it will also break down your arts and literature requirement, whether it's two or three classes, scientific inquiry, and so on. That's great. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I've had the opportunity to teach Chicago Quarter a couple times now. I'm pretty sure as part of the Chicago Quarter program, students will also get an in-depth review of what that degree progress report looks like um, from their Chicago Quarter mentor as well. Yes, that will be during the academic planning um, session. I think that's about the middle of the quarter right before uh, you register for classes. So definitely pay attention to that lesson in common hour. Yeah. Well, and I think we've heard it a couple times, but it's worth reiterating both in this interview and other interviews. We can't stress enough how important it is to really talk to your academic advisor. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I can't remember exactly who said it, but plan to meet with your academic advisor quarterly. You know, mm -hmm. they're, the, you're, the, the money that you are spending for your DePaul education, you want to make sure that you're maximizing it to, to the, to the, the most that you can and that you have all of the the right learning opportunities that that one align with the degree requirements that you have but also that give you the opportunity to explore new and different topics that you might not have had the opportunity to before so again just can't stress it enough make sure you make mm -hmm. those plans to meet with your academic advisor um, frequently regularly every quarter because it is it'll it'll help you a lot in as you progress throughout your time at DePaul Agreed. And if there's any questions or you're curious about an exception to a liberal studies requirement or policy, if you email our office, definitely copy your advisor and so they're part of that communication as well. Great. So, Celia, I'm curious if you have any, uh, I think you probably work with a lot of either first year students or transfer students. Uh, curious if you have any advice for them as they're starting their time here at DePaul. Don't be afraid to reach out to your fac any of your professors, any uh, in Chicago Court or your staff pro, your student mentor is there as a resource. Uh, and especially now that we're virtual, it's a lot easier to connect. So um, uh, join those office hours, even if it's just to say hi, to show your face, to put a, a face with a name. And, uh, and, and don't be afraid, No, there's no such thing as stupid questions, especially as you're trying to figure out college in this unusual time. Yeah, the only stupid question is the one that goes unasked. So definitely take this opportunity, especially in those first few weeks. Uh, people want to ask your answer your questions. Usually, when we our doors are open, we have these buttons that say "How can I help?" Um, and we we wear those because that spirit of helpfulness and and wanting to be of service to our students always streams through. And even in this virtual environment. 
But Celia, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Again, students, if you have any questions about the Liberal Studies program, uh, feel free to reach out. You can check them out on their website or contact them via email as well. Uh, if you didn't have the opportunity to at the beginning of the stream, you also can check into today's stream uh, by scanning the QR code pictured here or by clicking the link in the comments. We've also got a number of different activities planned as part of Welcome Week. As you may be aware, our Get, no Get to Know DePaul series is part of our Welcome Week offerings. So uh, from August 26th through September 11th, we have about 165 offerings taking place uh, throughout that time period. So um, you can see the full schedule of events at welcomeweek.depaul.edu. Our next Get to Know DePaul session is going to be tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. and we'll be meeting with the staff from Religious Diversity and Pastoral Care. So be sure to check that out. Uh, in the meantime though, uh, we do have a couple of uh, evening events planned as part of Welcome Week, too. So first, uh, this evening, uh, we've got Big Heads and Beats. So from 7 to 9 p.m. tonight, you can join us uh, to have a caricature drawn uh, along with some live music. You can find the link to register at uh, dhub, so dhub.depaul.edu. You'll find the link right there. You can join in um, and get that caricature made. Then this Sunday night, we are having a stream series uh, from Haunted Chicago. So Haunted Chicago will be joining us to talk a little bit about the spookier side of Lincoln Park in the city of Chicago. So you can join in uh, for some late night ghost stories again at 7 p.m. It'll be live streamed to OSI's page, DAB, and ResEd as well. And then finally, uh, an upcoming opportunity that we have that requires a little bit of pre-planning uh, is our, our paint and palette. So this upcoming Tuesday, September 8th, uh, we're going to be joined by the staff from Pino's Palette for a paint and pa palette seminar class. Um, if you are a student in quarantine in the res halls, you can sign up to have your kit delivered to you. If you are in Lincoln Park, you can stop by the Student Center and pick it up in the Office of Student Involvement, which is located on the second floor of the Student Center. Or if you are uh, a remote student this quarter, you can sign up to have a kit mailed to you. So the links to all three of those uh, kits are, are pictured here. Um, again, you can go into the Office of Student Involvement's DHUB page, though, to find the links directly as well. Um, but again, just one final reminder, if you haven't had a chance to check in, be sure to do so. Um, but Celia, thanks again for joining us. And to all of our viewers, have a safe evening, and we will see you at Big Heads and Beats at 7 o'clock. Bye-bye, everybody.